Hi guys, so in this video I am going to put together a little tutorial or a how-to on shooting your first wedding ceremony as a solo shooter for videography. I recently had my first wedding, I've got another couple coming up and I'm going to talk you through how I shot the ceremony uh, in order to make a full film but also the highlights film as well. So, jumping in here to the pre-planned setup, I went to visit the venue a couple of times to have a look, at, look around, see what the setup would be like, the room I'd be working in, and how I could set up my cameras. Uh, over here we've got me holding my gimbal, uh, the videographer with a gimbal, and that's camera 3, which is a zoom lens, the Sony 18-105 to f4. Um, camera 2 would be on a tripod, and... I decided to put that with the 7800 f4 and camera one was going to be the 85mm 18. Um, again, that had been decided from having visited the venue, seen what its setup was like and deciding what the best angles would be. Now, I got told <laughs> in the setup for this that there would be some space to walk around, uh, even though it was going to be quite a big wedding. Um, so my idea was I would be able to basically wander around the outsides to get whatever angle I wanted with my gimbal camera uh, and also not to be obtrusive to anyone who was uh, obviously spectating the ceremony. I also got told that this wedding was a little bit unusual because instead of your typical bride and groom, we had two brides for this one and I got told that the first bride would stand at this position like a groom would and so I decided I would have my first camera with the 85mm set up ahead of anyone entering um, to be able to get a tight shot on the first bride. My second camera was going to be a safe one which would have ended up here and taking, uh, I was I was tavering between going wide with this one uh, or going tighter on the, the two, two brides and the officiant. I decided to go with the latter option there, um, but this camera was going to be tricky to get rolling because obviously I can't have it in position before the brides have got uh, down the aisle. So what I was planning on doing was having this one just over at the side there before the either bride had came down. I was going to be positioned here. So what I was planning on doing was positioning myself here and then getting a nice shot of the first bride as she walked down the aisle. And as she went into position over here, I would peel off to this side towards camera one, get camera one rolling, focused on the bride's face, um, and then come back over into position to get the second bride coming down the aisle. And once she got down the aisle and into position, I could then scoot around to the back here, <clears throat> get camera two into position, set up focused and recording, and then I could make my way around up to this side to then get a shot on the second bride, a tight up, tight close up of her face. Unfortunately, as weddings tend to go, it didn't quite work out that way. So here was my actual setup with what I found when I arrived on the day. It was quite a big wedding and so they had to cram everyone in and that meant the seating was right up against either wall, which immediately said to me, right, I can't get round the sides to get back to camera two. Um, so that was... that that. that snookered me a wee bit and I thought the only way I'm going to get around this is either to have camera two set up way back so this this section underneath here was like the um where the reception was going to be with the the tables but the wedding coordinator said to me that the curtains at the back of the ceremony room would be closed during the ceremony so that ruled out that option of having the camera way back here However, what he said to me was, we could have it peeking through um, as long as I would be able to get back and move it out of the way before the brides walked down the aisle. So I thought, great, that's what we'll go with. 
Um, but the next issue was how am I going to get there <laughs> to get it into position? Um, so what ended up happening was I was set up in position like so, ready for bride one to make her way down the aisle. Got a shot of her coming down the aisle. And unfortunately, instead of going into the position that I told was told she was going into, she stood over on the left. I'd peeled off to this side, to this camera. And of course, there's nobody standing there to get focus on. So that sort of snookered me a wee bit. And what I decided to do was get that camera rolling um, and then get into position to see the second bride come down the aisle. When she made her way down the aisle and into position, got a nice shot of her coming down and then moved quickly over to camera one, checked the focus on that, made sure it was, was in position. I believe I ended up going manual focus for this. So although the Sonys have really good autofocus systems, um, decided to go with manual focus just in case the officiant or bride one turned and the autofocus picked up their face instead. Again, I could have used zone focus as well, but I thought, you know what, I'll shoot it. Um, I think I sh shot at f2 or f2.2 and um, focused on her, shoved it into manual focus and, and left it there. Took a bit of a risk with that being my first wedding, shallow depth of field, but I thought, why not go for it, see what happens. I then made my way round and had to duck down and try to be as, as um, unobtrusive as possible. Made my way up to the back here to get camera two into position and recording. <clears throat> now, once I'd got camera two focused, set up, Again, I think I shot that at f8, so I was a little bit more, it might have been f5.6, five, five, um, but I was a little bit more safer with this. This was going to be my safe camera angle that I could cut to if anyone walked in the way of camera one, if camera one hadn't focused properly, if bride two moved and put the focus out, um, camera two was there as my safe bet. Uh, I then had the problem of, right, how do I get into my ideal position, which was going to be up here to be able to see bride one without being center of attention, if you like. And so I just had to bide my time for a minute or two until an opportunity arose where there was maybe some laughter or something that allowed me to, again, just to, to sneak by here, ducking down, trying to stay out of the way um, to then be able to get a tight shot on bride one. This then allowed me to relax for a wee bit because the next 20, 25 minutes or so was basically me shooting Bride One. Um, I'd also get some shots of the guests, some of the family members, things like that um, as they went through the next part of the ceremony. Um, I say momentarily because the next issue I had is more with the Sony cameras. So I used the three A6000s. Um, anyone who owns Sony cameras will know they have a maximum record time of 30 minutes. And so I was starting to get a little bit worried about camera one because I thought that's gonna be pushing close to 30 minutes here. So I just had to take a moment at, at one point to, to nip over here, reset the recording, um, reset the focus and jump back. I decided I wasn't going to go down to camera two at this point and reset that. It had taken an extra five minutes or so for me to get down there. And because it was at such a distance and you couldn't really see what was, you couldn't lip read um, people from there. I thought if I've got 20, 25 minutes of footage from there, I would be able to cut to that and just um, manufacture a, a, a shot if there was a gap I needed to fill at some point. Um, once we got to the point where um, the, the two brides needed to go over to sign their vows uh, or sign the, the register, they made their way over to this little table that was over at this side. Um, I went over to camera one and reset that and started it again. Um, just to, again, give me an angle on the brides when they came back. Um, and made my way down to camera two, 
stopped that recording. It was still going, so it was still within the half hour, which was great. It meant I'd got as much footage as possible and just n knocked it over to the side. Um, and I made my way back up to here and got some shots of them signing the register along with the um, witnesses. <clears throat> Almost there now. Once we were finished signing the register, the two brides were back into position. Again, that was me taking up my standard position over here on bride one. Um, the officiant announced them as uh, married and they made their way down the aisle together and I simply followed in behind with a nice wide shot that allowed me to have a view on both of their dresses as they exited the ceremony room. Um, and that was the end of the ceremony. So a couple of things that went wrong, but it's I found it was just about being able to think on your feet, figure out what you could do in that situation to um, correct things. I, another option that went through my mind was I could have moved camera one over to the opposite side once the first bride had came down the aisle. But I thought, I don't know what problems that might cause me further down the line. And I just went with my gut instinct and thought, I'll just leave it as planned. And if I miss out a little bit at the start, so be it. Um, I, I would just have to have explained afterwards that I was told the brides were going to be lined up the opposite way around. Um, hopefully you found that video helpful. Um, obviously three cameras there, so it's it's maybe not... Um, ideal for everyone. You may you may only have two cameras. I would certainly never risk filming a wedding with only one camera because if that camera goes, how are you going to explain to the to the couple that you've messed up and not had a backup? If I only had two cameras, I think the what I would have done would still have my safe camera up at the back, um, camera two taken away camera one and then simply moved myself from side to side to focus on whoever, whichever of the couple was speaking at each time. So if you've only got a two camera set up, that's probably the way I would, I would advise doing it. Uh, I've got another wedding on Saturday coming, so I'm going to try something a little bit different with that because the area we've got is a little bit different. So obviously it depends on, on what sort of space you're working with. If you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate a like. Um, and if you've got any questions, pop them down in the comments box. I'd love to hear from you and see what, what you would, you'd have done differently maybe. Thanks for watching.